In this video, we're going to explain technical assets. As explained in an earlier video, we explain here's a plant maintenance high level process flow, and it starts off with technical assets. So now we're going to discuss technical assets. As you can see, technical assets are immediately integrated with procurement and the maintenance data. Eventually, from here, they'll link to the rest of the process flow. So, key points linked to procurement and maintenance data. We'll now go and look at this in greater detail. Here is technical assets. In order to fully understand, we'll first start with procurement. So, we'll start off with they, there's, there's a case developed, there's a feasibility study, and then it's planned and budgeted, and the source of the vendor is determined, and then the item is procured. Once it's procured, there are certain processes and SAP that are done by the procurement department to bring in the following data. This is master data. It'd be functional location, equipment, bill of materials, and tools. These are mandatory. This is not mandatory. From here, you could get a little fancier and add the configuration management. Configuration management, the best way to look at it is like the blueprints of these technical assets. If you want to have a law, uh, if it's a very um, specific item that has a lot of technical regulations, you'll want to implement this. Good example would be if you have a very specific car, you could only have a specific engine installed, specific wheels, specific chassis, only a certain type of oil. All that will be kept within here. In configuration management, we have all the restrictions on how this technical asset could be. If you have a very simple technical asset, not many restrictions, and you just have a bill of materials, you don't need this. From this, you could also have permits. This is a very dangerous uh, equipment to, or technical asset to work with. If it's a very complex and big technical asset, you might want to have a lot of classes and characteristics. You might even want to have catalogs that deal with, oh, if this part of the asset breaks down, here's a catalog to deal with it. Or if you want to have uh, any other information they wish to store, like fault codes. Technical asset could be as big as a power plant which is a functional location to a small as a fridge. It's got to be something that's worthwhile keeping track of. Now for fridge I probably wouldn't put a catalog but for a power plant that has all sorts of uh, equipment all over it and it repeats like maybe you'll have about 100 pumps within the functional location, within the power plant, you might want to keep a catalog of all the things that could go wrong with pumps. So as you're analyzing your broken pumps or all the maintenance on pumps, you see, oh, 50 of my 100 pumps are um, overheating. Why is that? Maybe I'm overworking them. Or maybe this vendor didn't sell me a good asset. So forth. From here, as you can see, these are directly linked to maintenance data, which is the other tech, uh, integration point. How does it integrate? Well, all the assets here will have to have, could have documents, which is document info records, the technical drawings against the document, the functional location or equipment. They can have task list. A task list is basically a set of instructions on how to fix a particular problem. You could have a set of instructions on how to change the oil on a car. You could have a set of instructions on how to um, change a timing belt or fix a jet engine. It could be very complex, it could be very simple. From here you have maintenance plans which is a routine that you want to be done on your technical asset. So as you're doing the master data load into SAP, you have to think, do I want to create these? I want to create the technical drawings, instructions how to fix particular problems, uh, maintenance plans, like uh, a plan I should change the oil every 5,000 kilometers, measuring points, 
or the measuring point would be would be like a meter, some sort of meter, something to keep track of. Like a plane would be takeoffs and landings. Maybe you want to see how much uh, kilometers your car has driven. That'll be a measuring point. From there, maybe you have warranty info. You don't want to pay for all the maintenance costs yourself. If you have warranty, you want to put that contract to the technical assets. So if something happens to your car and it breaks down, your your staff knows not to fix it themselves. They know to call the vendor and ask them to fix it under warranty. You'll also have vendor services if 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 you want, like plumbing services that will look after a particular asset. You can have work center, which are your shops, the the employees that look after these technical assets. And you can have MRP, which is the levels of parts you should have in inventory for this. Here you'll notice configuration management and MRP are directly linked. If you decide to get this complex where you have configuration management, it is a very good idea to directly link MRP levels from configuration management to MRP. These are integration points, and if you work with technical assets, that's the main things you need to understand.